Hello again. Uh, so now we have Kunal Soni on stage. He's the head of Google Play Partnerships for Southeast Asia, India, and Australia. Uh, quite quite a lot of territory to cover there. Um, so prior to prior to this role, he led Google's performance marketing team in the region. So he's uh, someone who really understands how to build success, and this is kind of what the talk is about today. Um, you know, we we can all see the biggest earners on mobile platforms, but. Really, the challenge is trying to build a business that can sustain long enough to actually have a reasonable chance of that kind of success. So I think we're going to hear some useful tips, useful strategies for, for getting there. So if you'd like to, to begin. Absolutely. So am I audible? Yeah? Cool. Great. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Kunal, and I look after Google Play apps and games uh, for Southeast Asia and India and Australia, as, as Matt mentioned. Uh, great to be here this afternoon. Um, how's everyone feeling post-lunch? Need some caffeine? Yeah, cool. OK, we'll try and keep this short and crisp and uh, hopefully get you guys to participate a bit uh, in, in the questions at the end. And, and that will wake everyone up. Great. So what I wanted to do in the next 20 minutes or so was to talk to you quickly about what we're seeing as far as Play and Android are concerned, some of the key macro, macro trends that matter, and the implications that those trends have for you as game developers. And more importantly, then jump into some of the key strategic levers, as well as tips and best practices, which, which we think are important for you to consider as you start thinking about building a bigger, better, more successful business on Google Play. Right. So that, that's, that's, how I was, I, that's how I was hoping to use the next 20 minutes or so. Um, before I do that, let's quickly talk about Android. So I think over, over the last couple of years, I think you all, you're all aware as to how incredibly important and powerful Android has become as far as distribution and creation and design and development of high quality apps and games are concerned. Right? So clearly, uh, through Android and, and, and relatedly through Play, now you can reach billions and billions of smartphone users across the world, um, clearly allowing you to not, not only reach them, but also meaningfully engage with them. Uh, I, Android, Android uh, crossed a very, very important milestone uh, middle of last year, which was that now we have over a billion active Android devices in the world, right? And that number continues to grow by leaps and bounds at a very, very interesting, very, very interesting pace. Um, so what does that mean for you? I think there are, what, what that really means is potentially there's a very large audience of users who are currently uh, on Android devices all over the world and therefore potential customers for you. Let's talk about gamers, right? So the interesting thing to note is that three out of four Android users today are active gamers, right? So, so, so if you do the math, a, a billion plus Android devices, uh, three out of four playing games, and you, you, you get a sense of what the opportunity is, right? So about 750 million engaged Android users who are playing games and potentially uh, customers for you as you think about new titles and new markets, right? And that's something which is very, very interesting to, to note. So you combine that, right? A, million, a billion devices, 750 million uh, plus active gamers, and there you have a very large, very interesting, and a growing commercial opportunity for your businesses, right? So even if, even if you look at Android currently, despite the growth, despite the fact that we've been growing significantly, the fact is, if you, if you look at that in relation to what's happening in a lot of markets today, uh, smartphone penetration right, continues to be uh, less than 25-30% in a lot of emerging markets. And clearly that points to the whole, the, whole, the whole set of opportunities which are going to open up even more so going forward as more and more people get smartphones, high quality affordable devices, which will, become, which will hopefully turn a lot of them into customers for your games and users of your games. Right? So, so the, the headline there is Android is, 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 is growing pretty fast, but having said that, there's a large opportunity to grow even further because we do we do know for a fact that smartphone penetration in a lot of especially southeast asian markets uh continues to uh, to to lag uh, a lot of the developed markets and therefore there's going to be an immense headroom for you to grow your business android one is, is actually has everybody here heard of android one show of hands who's heard of android one all right well we're obviously not doing a great job of marketing it then uh, so Android One is, is really our initiative, which is it's a Google initiative to ensure that the next wave of internet users who are going to be coming online uh, get access to high quality devices at affordable prices. Right? And that is a very, very clear need for markets such as the ones that we operate in. 
Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and India, Thailand. A lot of these, a lot of the users who are now going to be coming online as part of the next wave will come onto mobile devices, and they need access to high-quality devices at the right price. So Android One is our initiative uh, aimed at achieving that objective. Uh, and with initiatives like that, I'm pretty sure that the smartphone penetration rates in these markets is going to grow, which means more users for you and for your games. $7 billion, right? That's the amount of money which was paid out to developers by Google over the last 12 months, right? So that's very interesting to know. This number has, you know, we're very proud of the fact that this number is something which is increasing year on year, uh, essentially pointing to the fact that now developers such as yourselves have a very interesting and very lucrative opportunity to grow a successful business and play, uh, make money, create jobs. Uh, and, and deliver a world-class experience to users who are not going to be coming onto dev these devices, right? So clearly, I think if you look at the overall commercial opportunity, that's something which is increasing, very, very powerful, and, and, and creating a lot of opportunities for a lot of developers all over the world, right? That's the number to, to, uh, to watch out for. Uh, monetization is continue, continues to be a very, very strong focus for us. We want to make sure that we are equipping developers with the right set of monetization platforms wherever we go. Uh, and these numbers keep on changing month on month. So we're trying to expand the portfolio of monetization platforms available. Direct carrier billing is available in about 32 countries. And I hope that number is not changed to 33 because that number changes quite often. Uh, in Southeast Asia, we have direct carrier billing now live in Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and we are lighting up new markets very, very quickly. So I hope, I hope you all are aware of the fact that now we do have direct carrier billing in your markets, uh, and therefore it's, it's, a, it's a great new opportunity for you to reach out to users, get them to pay for content which, which you are creating, and improve the overall monetization of your apps and games. Gift, uh, Google Play gift cards is another very, very uh, interesting, locally relevant form of payment that we are working on. We already have this in 28 countries. Uh, if all things go well, we should be launching uh, in most of Southeast Asian markets fairly quickly. So that's another thing to, to watch out for. And PayPal in some markets where it's relevant. So clearly, I think, I think there's a, the, the, the point I want to make is that there's a lot of initiatives which are currently underway to make sure that there are the right opportunities for you all to monetize your apps and games uh, in, in all these markets that we're operating in, okay? Great, so we've, we've, we've sort of set the context here. Android is large, growing fast. Smartphone opportunity continues to be uh, a pretty powerful driver uh, for the whole overall games business. And the fact is that we are lighting up, we are sort of initiating newer forms of payment in, in a lot of the markets that you are operating in. So given, given all that is happening, what do we do? What do we need to focus on as developers to make sure that we use these two tools, these tips, and these levers as effectively as possible to build a really, really strong uh, business uh, which allows us to design, develop, and distribute these apps in the most effective manner, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about four key pillars which I think were relevant for this group. Um, how do you start thinking about building a game which is going to be successful? So what are, the, what are the main quality signals that you need to look out for? Because ultimately, look, go, going back to basics, guys, this is all about quality, right? That, that forms the cornerstone, the pillar of all your success on play, getting the right quality and making sure that you use the, the ability that Android gives you in terms of pushing the limits on quality as far as, as far as your games are concerned. Then we move on to user acquisition. I'm sure everybody cares about user acquisition here. Uh, what are the various things you could do to improve the pace and quality of users that you typically get? Um, but having said that, user acquisition is probably one part of the story. I think, I think increasingly everybody's realizing that success or sustainable success will really, will really come in from engagement, right? You want to have a base of users who have not just installed your game, but they are constantly engaged. They are, they're spending time, uh, which means more session time, more monetization opportunities, more revenue for all of you, right? And I'm going to conclude by talking about how to think about your internationalization strategy. What do you, what do you want to look at in terms of new markets? Uh, what are the key growth trends that you need to look at as you think about charting out new territories uh, for your titles, right? Let's talk about the first one. So like I said, I think uh, what, we've, what we've observed at play is that there is, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? There is a very, very clear correlation between uh, the quality of your games 
and the, and the revenue you make. So what we found is that every incremental star rating that you get on your cumulative app rating or game rating tends to have a disproportionately high impact on revenue, right? So if you move from, uh, from say, 2 to 2.9 to 3, 3.9, typically you see a 9x improvement in revenue and that number changes to 4x as you move from 4 to 5, right? So clearly I think there is, there is a very, very clear business reason, not just a user experience reason, but a very, very strong business reason for you to think about getting the right quality, uh, which gets reflected in better ratings and therefore higher revenue for you. So how do you do that, right? What are the typical, just, does anybody want to take a shot? What do you typically do when, you, when you're thinking about building games? How do you focus on quality? What are some of the things that you do to make sure that you're getting the right quality? Anyone? Any, any tools, any, 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 any techniques that you use? Sorry? Prototyping, all right. What else? Come on, guys. I'm sure everybody focuses on quality here. OK, cool. Let's move on. So I think, I think there are, I think there are some, some tools which are available uh, for, for you as part of the developer console itself, which I'm hoping, uh, if, if people don't use now, I'm hoping they're going to start using. Because look, it's, it's something which cl clearly impacts the, the overall user experience of your games. So does, how, how about AB alpha beta testing? Have people used that in Google Play? How many of you, how, how many of you have used uh, A-B test? OK. Alpha, beta, both? No, only, beta. only beta. OK, cool. Anyone else? Any experience with alpha, beta testing? So guys, that, that's a pretty powerful tool uh, to get. Uh, it, 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 it's a free tool. It's available on the console. Make sure that you use things like those to, to get real-time feedback from early users. Uh, and to minimize the risk of overall rollout. So when, you know, it, it, it's, the fact is you're investing development effort, development resources in building these games. Uh, it's always a good idea to roll it out to a small group of users uh, who you can select, by the way. You can select wherever they're coming from, whether it's location or, or device type. Put them into a Google group and, and uh, make them part of a beta group, which can give you very, very quick, actionable feedback on your games. Right? So that's a tool which is available. Um, Stage rollouts. Have people used stage rollouts here? OK. Do you want to share your experience, anything that you've observed about, sh about stage rollouts? OK. Some pretty big issues. So okay. you know we've found uh, crash bugs or functionality bugs that we didn't spot, um, and that enables us to roll back or and fix that um, before exposing our whole audience to uh, to that problem. Great, fantastic. So that's that that's the exact use case, right? The fact is, whenever you are pushing updates, it's always again a good idea to stagger those updates and reach out and roll out uh, to a progressively higher percentage of users. So that's exactly what stage rollouts do. You can decide to roll out an update uh, in increments of, say, for example, 5% of your user base. Right? So initially, 5% of users get your update, and then you can expand that to 10, 15, 20, 30, 100% of your users over two or three or four days, whatever works for you. The, the point here is that there is a tool available for you to make sure that you are reaching your users in a way which minimizes your risk, uh, picks up any early crash signals, uh, in ANR reports, any bugs, any initial feedback before you have a full-scale rollout, right? So it's a pretty, pretty powerful way of making sure that you that you um, optimize for quality and optimize for user experience before a full rollout has happened. Right? So those are some 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 tools which are available currently in the console, which will help you improve quality. Um, we get this question a lot, right? What happens in during beta testing? Can people can people actually rate my app, review my app? No, right? So people can't publicly rate your app during a beta testing phase. So you are in a relatively risk-free environment to get feedback without worrying about ratings and reviews, right? So, so please make sure of, that, you, that you're aware of this and that you use this tool. Like I said, uh, player feedback is received through Google Groups. People can't rate your app publicly uh, or review it. Uh, and there are two tracks available, alpha and beta both. Alpha typically is recommended for a very early stage, relatively unstable build, 
right? Uh, and therefore, the, the percentage or the number of users that you may want to think about for your alpha push may be slightly smaller. Beta is when your product is largely ready uh, to be rolled out and, uh, and, and it's relatively stable. And that's when you can that's when you can use beta groups uh, by 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 deploying Google Groups, right? So any questions on beta testing, um, stage rollouts? Okay, cool. Tablets. How many people here design for tablets? Wow, just one. Okay. So if you are if you are designing for tablets, if you if you think that your users are on on tablet devices, make sure that you're also providing supporting assets, whether it's a seven inch optimized screenshot or a 10 inch optimized screenshot, because these are some basic things which are not available sometimes, which impacts the overall discoverability of your game on tablets. So make sure that if you are building for tablets, you are using the right set of uh, tools which are tablet optimized in order to make your tablet apps and games more discoverable, okay? Cool. So we've spoken about quality. Let's talk about user acquisition. Um, again, you know, I'm, I'm sure all of you use a multiple, you, you have a plethora of ways of, of acquiring users, whether it's paid channels or just through organic listings or social platforms or whatever it is. Uh, as far as Google Play is concerned, I think it's very important to get a few things right uh, because that impacts the overall uh, discoverability of your game. Um, your store listing, I still don't think enough people pay attention to, uh, to, to the quality of the, the language, the screenshots, the assets which are being used in the store listing. I think it's a very, very important uh, tool which is available, a very important asset which is there for you to make the right impression to early users. So make sure that the video or the feature graphic is of high quality. Make sure there is a very compelling summary, a text summary of what the game is all about, which is part of your uh, store listing because that is the first impression that users get when they land on your Play Store page, right? So make sure you do that. Uh, as far as the store listing pages, like I said, the icons should stand out. So these are just some examples I've picked up from Leo's Fortune. Uh, the icons need to be compelling and simple and engaging. Uh, the description, right? So here what they're saying is adventure through a gorgeous handcrafted world to recover your... It's a pretty interesting description, right? It's something which, which would get a gamer excited and, 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 and incentivize them to download uh, the game. So make sure that, that the description is very crisp and clear, right? Uh, make sure if you have a video, you use that to promote the game and the screenshots should be of high quality. Ratings. You've already spoken about the, the importance of ratings. Uh, the fact is that there is a very, very strong correlation between ratings and, and performance. Make sure that you are getting the insights. You are using the insights that the developer console gives you in terms of ratings. I'm, I'm not sure how many people know, but you can actually filter out ratings by, by the actual value. So one star, two star, three star, etc. You can filter out by device. You can filter out by Android platform through the developer console even currently. So make sure that you are understanding how people are rating uh, your your game and how different users are rating your game because you may find that a particular device type is not working well for you as a result of which ratings coming in from those devices are not as great as ratings coming in from different devices, right? So make sure that you use this tool which is available in the, in the developer console to monitor ratings very, very closely. How many people here use the Google Play badge in, in while promoting? Okay. So what we found is that, and this is, this is part of a global stat that we have, that users are about 47% more likely to install your game if, if they see the Google Play badge uh, in, in your promotional material, whether it's an email or it's a campaign or whatever it is. It's, it's a free asset that you can download and start using. Make sure that where possible, you use the Google Play badge because that lends that extra level of credibility uh, and discoverability to the game. So make sure you, uh, you do these simple things. obvious, especially for emerging markets where we know we are struggling on bandwidth. Uh, we still have a lot of devices which, are, which have a 512 MB RAM, which are, are running on 2G connections, et cetera, et cetera. So I think given that, that that is the nature of the market that we are operating in, it's extremely important that you optimize uh, your game and your creative assets for users in a lot of these markets. Uh, how many people here uh, monetize through AdMob? Okay, a few, all right. So if you do, 
Uh, please make sure that you use this. It's, it's a free, it's, essentially, what you can do is you can use house ads, right? House ads are free ads, which you can use on your own apps to promote new games, right? So if you are already using AdMob to monetize through ads, make sure you use the house ads feature um, to drive awareness and discoverability of new titles, OK? Um, paid promotion. So while, of course, there are very, very powerful organic ways of driving uh, user acquisition, there are, there are a bunch of uh, solution, marketing solutions which Google offers, whether it's TrueView ads, uh, search campaigns and AdWords, uh, AdMob in-app campaigns, as well as MWeb, or mobile web campaigns, which are available uh, for you to run paid promotions if you're trying to boost discoverability of, of your new titles. Right. So we've spoken about user acquisition. I think, uh, like I said earlier, success or sustained success really lies in the ability to engage and retain users. And there are, there are uh, concerted efforts which are required to make sure that you do that, right? Given that there are a million plus apps on all these Play Stores, the on, on all the app stores, it's important to make sure that you, that you get the right level of engagement going to improve stickiness and, and overall monetization that your apps or games will drive. So what could you do to, to drive engagement, right? Um, have you heard of Google Play Game Services? Right, a few, pe a few people here? Okay, cool. So Google Play Games uh, essentially is a network of, of uh, players that we've now built up. So it is the fastest growing uh, gaming network in the world. Um, we, we recently got, we actually added about 100 million new users as part of Google Play Games over the last one year. Uh, and essentially this allows you to interact and engage with users who are already on Google Play more meaningfully uh, through a variety of features, right? So uh, Google Play Games allows you to use features such as achievements, leaderboards, uh, saved game states, multiplayer, game gifts, as well as quests, all which are available through the Google Play Games API. So in case you haven't uh, used this in the past, make sure that you are aware of the features which are already available through the Google Play Games Services API. The, the fact is that, look, increasingly as users get more, more and more connected, um, they're using chat platforms, they're using social platforms, they are part of networks, the social layer of your games or the social, the, 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 the social characteristics, characteristics or features that you want to apply to your games is also increasing, right? Uh, what we've done is we've, we've done a bit of research on users and gamers across the world and we find that Typically, we've got three sets of users, or three kinds of users who are currently on Google Play, who are playing games, uh, based on their openness uh, or, or ability or willingness to actually sh to participate in social interactions, being from very, very close to being fairly open, right? So what are these three personas? We've got these three personas or three characteristics uh, that we've got. On one hand, you've got the competitor persona, which means that these are people who are extremely avid gamers who thrive on competition, right? These are people who love the fact that they're competing successfully and they want to share their achievements with their friends and family on social platforms, right? Uh, I'm sure for some of your titles, you've noticed that. On the other extreme, you've got people who don't really care too much about sh social sharing, but they do care about completing the game, right? So for them, achievement or success lies in the ability to actually complete the game and progress successively from each level to the other and, and, and have a sense of fulfillment, fulfillment on that. And in the middle, you've got these stealth gamers who don't really think of themselves as avid gamers, but, but if given the right set of incentives, uh, they will actually start engaging with your games more often. So what could you do differently to actually interact with all these three different types of personas or different types of gamers uh, more effectively through Google Play Games. I'm going to just quickly talk about that. So for the competitor persona, essentially somebody who likes to share, social leaderboards and real-time or turn-based multiplayer, which is available through Google Play Game services, could be an interesting thing for you to explore um, in order to engage this type of gamer more effectively for your titles. Uh, for, the com for the completionist, so somebody who likes to complete and, and s achievement for them lies in the fact that they've actually completed successive levels, uh, achievements as well as the ability to have saved game states on their phone could be an interesting way to engage uh, and, and make sure that they understand these features and therefore improve their stickiness with the overall title that you have. And for people who don't typically are 
in, each, in either of these two buckets. You could use gif gifts, you could use quests, which could be given by other people on the network in order to get them to interact more with your titles. So I think there are these features which are available. Uh, I would encourage you to go back and think about how social you want to make your games, and, and based on that, decide which feature makes sense for you uh, through, through the Google Play Services API. Right, so I'm gonna, the, the last section I'm gonna talk about uh, monetization globally. And uh, here again, I'm sure by just, just a quick show of hands, how many people here are developing titles for Southeast Asia markets only, or users in Southeast Asia? Okay, and how many are developing for global sort of, okay, so, so most of you, right? It seems to me that most of you do wanna develop titles which are, uh, which can be scaled globally, and therefore, um, there are some interesting tips and, trips, uh, tips and tricks to make sure that that happens successfully, whether it's having the local pricing, whether it's having localization in terms of the assets that you're using to promote in different, in different markets. All those are very, very important, uh, simple but important things to look at uh, as you think about your monetization strategy globally. Uh, clearly, if you, look at, if you look at the current landscape, I think there are, there are markets which are large, which already have large install bases. Uh, Whereas there are other markets which probably are not as large, but are growing really, really fast. So if you, if you, if you see markets like Southeast Asia, uh, most of the countries in Southeast Asia typically do not, well, they do have large bases compared to some of the smaller markets in, in lots of other de developing economies, but they're also growing very, very fast. So you see that if, you, if you're thinking about very, very rapid global expansion, you need to identify markets uh, which are growing in terms of smartphone penetration, uh, overall data consumption, whether it's rollout of 3G, 4G networks, all of those criteria which, which will actually impact the, the consumption of your games. And you obviously have the established large revenue markets, so markets like Japan, Korea, the US, uh, some parts of Europe, which are already established markets as far as monetization is concerned. However, they may not be the most Fa the, the fastest growing ones. So I think that's, a, that's more of a judgment call, a strategic call that you need to make as to what kind of markets you're targeting uh, for which titles as you, as you decide uh, to go global with some of these titles, okay? Through Play, you can now, um, you can distribute in more than 190 countries worldwide, uh, more than 130 countries in which you can actually distribute and sell your apps. Uh, and 65 countries in which you can localize your pricing. So that's an important thing to consider as you think about growing internationally, okay? Cool, so those are the four things I wanna to talk, to, talk to you about. How do you think about getting the right quality in your titles? How do you think about uh, some simple things about user acquisition, um, engagement, and monetization globally? And uh, with that, develop the ability to actually design, distribute, and, 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 and uh, develop apps which have a global appeal, which can reach a large base of, of users who are all over the world uh, consuming content on Android smartphones. Okay. Uh, outside of quality, uh, what does the editorial team on Google Play look for uh, for featuring? If you can speak to that. Yeah. So yes, quality is number one. Uh, apart from that, there are, there are things related to policy compliance, right? Making sure that you're compliant with Google Play policies. Um, so it's a combination of the quality of the game, the gameplay, the features that you're using. So very broadly speaking, uh, have you heard of core app quality guidelines on developer.android.com, right? So developer.android.com is, in fact, I should have come to that slide before. This is the, the go-to link for all things related to app quality and features. So please make a note of developer.android.com slash distribute. Um, this has all the quality criteria that, that, that we talk about or we review typically whenever we are looking at candidates for featuring. Apart from that, like I said, uh, features, um, um, if there are any innovative features that you've used, for example, are you using play game services? Right, and how effectively are you using play game services, right? Are you using any of the other more innovative Android technologies? For example, um, does your game or app work on, on Wear or Android Wear, right? Is enabled, or does that have, um, uh, is there any unique feature that you've Im included in the game which makes it stand out and, and makes them a stronger candidate for featuring? Those are some of the things apart from the policy issue that I spoke about. 
So quality, policy, and use of Android innovations.